Uh, from the Washington Free Beacon, positive news. Number of Minneapolis police stops and searches plummets. Decline in search mirrors might contribute to explosion of gun violence. Yeah, they're going to blame it for that. But this is actually a decrease in gun violence inherently, right? Because what is a police stop and a search? That's, that's gun violence. When, uh, I mean, I mean, if a mugger, like, for example, like if, a, if a mugger comes up to you and, and puts a gun in your face and says, give me your wallet. Now, would you, would you call that gun violence? I mean, it's a threat. It's, it's a threat of gun violence and the violence. But no, the act of coercion is considered by uh, mainstream media, police reporting, categorization standards. That's an act of police violence. Excuse me. That's an act of gun violence, right? Now, what if the mugger has the gun in his jacket, right? And he goes, he just puts his fingers, oh, I, got a, I got a gun. You know, and he's not actually, he doesn't actually show it to you, but you believe he's got it in it. It could be the finger in the jacket trick, right? But is that, is that, does that make it any different? If he doesn't show you the gun, but you're convinced that he has a gun, like if he's threatening you with a gun, still gun violence, right? Well, what if he's got the gun on his hip and the gun is exposed? And he says, hey, stop right there or else I am going to kill you. You will do what I say. Because, you know, now we're talking about what cops do. It, except they actually have they have other you know, gang members backing them up in, in their gang who openly carry firearms and make threats using this kind of gun violence. And it's you're going to pull. Oh, oh, you want. Oh, they're not threatening to kill. Yeah. Every time you see. Red, white, and blue, which means freedom every time, except when it's flashing behind you. When you see those lights, that is a threat of death. Let's be clear. A security guard at a mall flashing yellow lights is saying, can I please have your attention? Can you stop what you're doing? Can you pull over? Can I talk to you? Because they can't enforce that. Private property. Essentially, it's please do what I'm saying or leave, right? You can leave. We're We'll ask you to leave. We'll kick you off the property. But when it's a cop and it's those lights behind you, they are saying, pull over or else. What's the or else? Well, we will force you to stop. If you don't stop, we're going to chase you. We're going to have a helicopter follow you to your home or wherever the chase ends and you run out of gas or you crash into something or we set up a dangerous police barricade and have cars, you know, chasing you and making things even more dangerous. And uh, and then we're going to stop you and then we're going to grab you. And if you resist, yeah, we're going to shoot you. If you resist us kidnapping you and taking you, if you don't comply, we're going to kill you. So that they would use this as the excuse in this article is typical government police apologetics, right? The embattled Minneapolis P the police department has mostly ceased stopping and searching residents of the city as resources are being stretched thin by anti-cop protests and surging gun violence. Now, anti-cop protests. All right. You know, I'm not going to argue too much of, uh, over the semantics here, but I'm not like me. I'm not anti-cop. I'm anti being a cop. Cops are, are mostly as in themselves good, good people. They are all bastards in the sense that they are bastardized in their intent if they had any good ones in serving their communities and what they have been led to do in enforcing their victimless crimes and supporting and defending a system that actively protects criminals. So official data released by the MPD show that cumulative stops fell 36% in the week after George Floyd's death at the hands of three officers sparking nationwide protests. That trend has persisted. Between July 6 and 12, MPD officers made just 193 stops, down 77% from the same week last year. Stops involving searches of people and vehicles have plummeted just 20 over the week of July 12, 11, you know, 87, 90% declines, respectfully. So, as the article goes on to propagandize, such stops and searches are thought to play a critical, albeit controversial, role in keeping criminals and deadly firearms off the street. An analogous decline drove up homicide in Chicago. As such, the drop-off and searches may be fueling the ongoing violence. And this is a, a really 
a dangerous government myth, although, you know, controversial role in keeping criminals and deadly firearms. Well, no, who, you know, this is so racist. And, and, and it's not just that it's the policy itself is racist. It, it allows racial biases to be manifest in meaningful ways in the enforcement here. You saw like with New York, stop and frisk. Who gets stopped and frisked? Well, it's people who look suspicious. Who do cops think look suspicious? Well, it happens to be black people a lot, but it's also poor white people or anybody who's suspicious looking, which is a not a, a really bad way to in, in to to subject people to rights violations. But does this stop criminals? I mean, only at a random, really you know, marginal kind of way. This is not an effective way to deal with this real crime, you know, to, to create more like to, to commit more crimes. Let's, you know, it's, let, let's violate individuals' rights and forcibly stop them and threaten them with firearms as police officers so that they don't threaten people with firearms. Yeah. And what do they do? The cops, the cops are more effective thieves. They steal with civil asset forfeiture. And they steal on behalf of government writing citations. This slackening of day-to-day -day enforcement. And again, what, what are they enforcing? The fact that you don't have freedom to move. They are enforcing their martial law. An MPD press officer told the Washington Free Beacon represents a department stretched to its limits by an unprecedented spate of shootings in the weeks since Floyd's death. But it may also reflect police discomfort with day-to-day -day action interactions in a city that is now ground zero for the police defunding movement. That, in turn, may be exacerbating the violence, another link between anti-police sentiment and surging crime. And again, just there's such a dangerous bullshit myth about government police embedded in this story. I have to deconstruct this. And it's just, I, uh, let's start with the obvious. When seconds count, the police are just minutes away they do not proactively intervene in response to crime you can't call a cop and say hey i'm being mugged right now can you show up and arrest this guy it does hello reality doesn't work that way so this Suggest that this whole idea in the article, this, this premise is suggesting that because cops are not pulling over suspicious looking people at random for their versions of stop and frisk, violence is up. No, 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 no. You don't get to make that many leaps of logic in your bullshit propaganda to serve your criminal agenda and retain credibility. Not with me anyway. The article concludes, police stops and searches, sometimes referred to as stop and frisk, are sometimes controversial crime-fighting tools, which proponents say help combat gun crime in particular. So this is like, hey, you know, I'm a proponent of being able to just stop you and steal your stuff whenever, uh, you know, whenever I feel like it. And, uh, oh, you don't think that's a good idea? Well, look, I'm using the money to save children. So, you know, if you're oppo if you oppose this, uh, you know, you really it's because you hate children. Uh, the fact that you don't want me to just be able to randomly physically assault you and pat you down. Yeah, it's because you hate. Oh, oh, so the reason you're opposing these police powers to be able to stop and frisk is because you support criminal gun violence. Why would you do that? No, this is absolutely backwards nonsense being used by criminals in uniform to justify their criminal activity. In the lead up to Floyd's death on May 25, Minneapolis police regularly, regularly stopped and searched residents and their vehicles. In the preceding two full weeks, for example, there were 263 stops involving searches compared to 196 the preceding year as as if people aren't able to commit gun crimes you know with, without being able you know without without being able to like just yeah you know, avoid your stop and frisk procedures or not like you, you can't hide a gun from a cop you know 
it's not that hard, people. So this story, they got statistics and all sorts of other, you know, just silly, you know, propaganda and arguments. And when it comes down to it, I am grateful. I am glad that police all over America have been, to one small degree, put in their place. So, you know, you should be afraid. When you do something criminal, when you stop someone who is not actively committing a crime, and I don't mean one of your regulatory violations like drug possession or traffic violations or regulation, whatever, that you want to give them a citation for. No, I mean a real crime, like they're actually hurting somebody or stealing something. And you should be afraid. You should be. You should not do that. Cops should stop being criminals. They should stop enforcing victimless crime laws. And it's sad. It is truly sad that it took another death like that of George Floyd, that it took riots and shooting and burning down police stations for police to get the message that despite the government using you to steal from us, to give to politicians, to pay off, to pay off special interests, to fund police departments, to suppress us, is something we don't like. And we don't want it to continue. And if it ha has to happen this way, so be it. 